Welcome to Human Factors for Interior Design and Human Diversity. We know no two people are alike, from their physical stature to their cultural backgrounds and beliefs, and because of that, we must address human diversity in a variety of ways. Our objectives are to understand how um, human diversity relates to anthropology. We're going to take a look at some various cultures, um, but more than cultures, we're also going to look at the diversity within just um, our own population, if you would. Uh, there's a lot of di definitions of diversity, including how we relate to our visual culture and our spiritual dimensions. So we looked at what is anthropology and it's how people interact in social relationships. You know, what is our family structure? Uh, you know, how do we relate to people? And um, often anthropologists will use the look at another culture to understand their own because that's when we see our differences. So in cultural human diversity, we're talking about the global market, which means a variety of cultures from around the world. We're talking about spirituality or how people experience space. Religion um, is a little part of this because it does make up our background um, sometimes. And our ethnicity, which is not our race, but it is associated with our culture. It's our our norms in, within our culture, if you would. So culture can be defined as shared patterns of behavior and interactions, cognitive constructs, and understanding that are learned by socialization. So we perceive and describe everything based on our own thinking. This becomes our reality. And things such as social uh, science, religion, they all make up our cognitive constructs. These are just convenient ways to help us understand the world, sort of like a shorthand, if you would. When we look at personal human diversity, of course, we're going to look at age differences. People behave in different ways because they grew up in different environments. We're going to look at physical differences, and we've, of course, explored that within the ADA and just anthropometrics in general. We're going to look at gender differences and, of course, perceptual differences, which the book doesn't really cover, but I feel is a big factor in how we understand and process the world. So when we look at our age differences, we're going to cover our personal diversity first. Uh, we have four categories. Um, this has really just come about in the past uh, 10 years that we're defining um, people by age because we do realize that they grew up in a different environment um, because of what was going on in the world at the time. Um, I know we looked at what is work, you know, when we were talking in class, but let's look also at technology. You know, a traditionalist hopes they, ha they can outlive it, and uh, the millennials employ it. Our physical diversity, we're all different sizes. We've looked at this before. And then as part of universal and inclusive design, when we incorporate bariatric furniture or furniture for uh, the obese, then uh, we want to make it be able to be used without a lot of rigmarole. Gender diversity, of course, is under discussion a lot uh, these days. And I've mentioned that the state fire marshal um, will often make uh, architects and designers set apart uh, gender-specific restrooms. And um, really, gender is determined by what people do and the roles that they serve and um, how they um, perform in pu public and private life. It's a personal definition. Perceptual diversity. We don't see the world as it is. We see it as we, as it's going to work for us. So we filter everything through perception. And this can be anything from age, our brain wiring, our belief systems. Um, it all ties in and goes in, and then it creates our behavior. Our culture di differences will affect things such as how we utilize space. We grew up in a in an environment where space was at a premium. Um, you know, we will feel differently about space than if we grew up in a 14,000 foot house. Uh, so even if we're not talking about a cultural difference, say someone from India versus someone from America, we could even be looking at the differences between the North and the South. And of course, our backstory and how we communicate with each other is a big part um, that's tied in with cultural differences. So our sensory differences are also affect our space planning and our square footages. It affects our acoustical design and what we consider is beauty. And it is how we experience the environment through our senses. Sometimes our senses can overwhelm us. Sometimes a space is underwhelming. 
But we have two types of receptors. The distance receptors are things that, of course, are at a distance to us. So it's something that we can see or we can hear or smell. Um, obviously, you know, the thinness of the paper walls versus the thickness of the brick walls in this illustration here will show you that people have different expectations of, say, acoustical privacy in these two environments. Our immediate receptors are about tactile space or things that affect uh, the heat of our skin um, and our movement through the space. So the Japanese floor plan is a wide open. We can move all the walls at any given time, so we have a lot of flexibility. The European floor plan must be experienced in a very linear kind of method. Um, it definitely affects how we use space. So we can look at a couple of uh, cultural examples in Islamic design and Japanese design. And as designers, we have to know what these cultural uh, visual cues are and be sensitive to that when we're designing for people either from that culture or if we're designing, say, a restaurant that has a cultural theme. We want to use these iconic um, images in a very thoughtful way. So let's talk about design considerations in a global market. The first thing we need to be able to do is actually communicate with each other, how we say hello and how we say thank you. Um, our visual culture, which is our cultural artifacts, such as uh, I gave an illustration of um, the United States Capitol building. That's very American. So then we, when we look at the global community, we have to realize that people come, coming from other cultures might have different norms than us and different customs than us. And uh, we need to be respectful and do some research before we meet these people because we certainly want to put our customers at ease. So in the spiritual dimension aspect of this, uh, we realize that space does have a spirituality to it, and how we experience it is very important. Um, in the Pueblo example, um, that culture uh, very much wanted to place their buildings on a north-south axis. In the feng shui, um, there is um, d exhaustive directions on how to orient one's health, in addition uh, to talking about how as you enter a room, uh, you can see down at the bottom the water is the entrance wall. And each of these bagua, um, or these portions of this bagua map, tie into what we think is going to happen. And so we may put a plant in a corner um, if we are needing a relationship. Uh, we might put a mirror there, something to bring the chi into our life. The spiritual dimensions, I was talking about the Gothic cathedral. So we are coming along very carefully in a procession kind of way, in an awe-inspiring um, environment. Um, this environment definitely will give you um, an effect. So the spiritual dimensions of aging um, seem to be related to that people become more reflective and introspective. This could change as all of our different age groups get to um, their older age. Um, it may be that the millennials do not feel uh, the same things that the traditionalists or the baby boomers feel. So here we can see that our spiritual dimensions also relate to some religious practices. There's a lot of symbolism with a temple, a synagogue, a church, a mosque, and that is their role in our society is to have and create symbolism for us. So I would like you to read uh, further in the book, in the book about the different uh, cultures and some of the aspects of their religion that may affect space, such as um, having a private altar in a home. So it's important to do your research on any project that will involve uh, something other than the culture that you know. So here's a case study for um, a, a Jewish synagogue in Little Rock. A lot of emphasis is placed, placed on community a lot of gathering spaces, um, a lot of history um, is set aside, a whole room was set aside to honor their history. The synagogue has, the Torah is kept behind a locked gate in this situation, and it's up on the bima, which is a very, very sacred space. We have to realize that there's a social aspect to um, religious environments and, um, and that people utilize that and it becomes part of their culture. And here are our conclusions. So we are affected by different cultures. We tie into the visual cultures, uh, visual aspects of many cultures. It's important for us to do research so that we're not stepping on anyone's toes and we can honor their culture. Thank you.